Battles at to a minute now. This man's getting ready. Two well Almeida's behind him. Jakob Fulsang at over four minutes wants time back. He wants a stage win. Now there's loads of excitement on the road wherever you're watching today. The Ronde van Vlaanderen has just finished. It won't spoil the result for you. Maybe you can check out everything on the Eurosport app, the GCN race pass, and as we look at the local monuments, you can get the chat to all the monuments. The women's and the men's Ronde van Vlaanderen and the Giro d'Italia stage here. All the review on tonight's breakaway. That's on the GCN race pass and the Eurosport player. Are you ready to go climbing? Rowan Dennis better had be. 200 metres away, the road kicks up and it kicks up quite sharply. Dennis in the lead. He has one minute, three seconds of a gap and he is flying. He's only got two minutes over the peloton though. Here's the right turn. It's uphill straight away. Piancavallo for the next summit finish at Giro d'Italia. Is it going to be breakaway? Is it going to be peloton? Is the Maglia Rosa still going to be on the back of Joao Almeida? We are about to find out. A minute and one seconds over those chasing. Two minutes and one over the Maglia Rosa group. Brian Smith, it's been a brilliant ride this from Rowan Dennis. But does he have a big enough gap? I'm not too sure he's got a big enough gap at two minutes. It really depends on the, the GC battle. If the GC battle commences early on this climb, which I think it should, then they're going to eat into that advantage. But, you know, with um, with Ryan Dennis now coming under two minutes, we know he's capable. If anybody's capable of doing this, it's Rowan Dennis because he, he knows how to hurt himself. It's his speciality in time trials. And he's just going to try and time trial the whole way up this uh, climb. The, I still believe that there's a big chance of winning this stage. But it really all depends on the other riders in the GC battle. If these other riders go on the attack sooner rather than later and not going to look at each other and cancel each other out, then they've got a chance of winning the stage. And why would a Stan and Sunweb ride? They're thinking of the stage as well as trying to take some back some time. 14 k's to go. And less than two minutes now. There's Visconti putting in his dig. Remember, a minute to close for them. Being chased by one of the two riders from Movistar. We know Visconti is with Samitier, Vilella, Vendrame and De Kent. And the peloton starts the climb. 14.4 kilometers. Astana are interested. Team somewhere have their invisible man, Wilco Kelderman. At just under a minute from the Maglia Rosa. Start the party. Anybody not there where they should be now. Anybody who went into the red too much in the time trial needs to be at their best now. The Giro d'Italia is in play. For the third time in the history of the Giro d'Italia, we climb to Piancavallo. Peloton has just started it and they are taking time back very quickly on Rowan Dennis. 13 and a half case to go. Oh, there's Ilmud Zakarin suffering again. We will see him another day. One by one, they may drop away. It's the survivor who will take the honours. Buaro. He just peeled off and Fellini takes over. Again, apologies if uh, 
certainly can't hear Brian at the moment. I'm not sure whether he's hearing me, unfortunately. Seems like we're having a, a few sound issues. So I'll carry on watching the race for you. Now, Rowan Dennis, 53 seconds. How's he feeling? He won't be feeling great about that gap that's coming down very quickly to the peloton. One minute 34, but he's got to ride his own race here. The first third of this climb, the first six kilometers, average gradient of 10%, maximum at 14. That comes after 5Ks. So with around nine to go. And in the meantime, it's Sami Thier and Visconti who are in the chase at 55 seconds. They're giving their best, Brian. It's a big, big ask, this. It is, but they're, they're committed to it. You know, they got themselves in the breakaway and, you know, they want to try and hang on, but you, you feel for them because, you know, Stan are still riding at pace. The gap is coming down all over the place. It's, it's where the attacks are going to come from. We've already seen three teams come to the front today, and those three teams will, will want to try and get something out of today. Um, otherwise, the, the morale of the team goes down a little bit. You do a lot of hard work, but... Yeah, Rowan Dennis still hanging on to just a minute and a half. It's looking a little bit unlikely now. It really depends on Astana here with uh, Fellini at the front of the peloton. Haig is still here, and I would think that Sunweb would want to still push on on this climb to try and deliver a win, because I think that the way that Kelderman's riding at the moment, he's looking good. He, He's looking good for a potential stage win, but let's see what Phil Sang and, and Possavivo say about that. He's giving everything. Twelve and a half kilometers to go. Oh, Fellini talked about how he just gets up now reads the tactical plan day by day and goes for it he's doing it today trying to set up Jakob Fulsang who sits on the wheel of his former teammate Nibali Dennis to the peloton not changing too much yet. 130. 102 back to those chasing on. Hale Bilbao, Hermann Pernstein are the riders to watch out in those orange Bahrain McLaren kits. Look out for those wearing Bora Hansgrohe jerseys too, as Thomas Agent is now taken back. That means that just Visconti and Sami Thier are on another good ride from Thomas Agent. Yeah, strong ride. He said he doesn't normally feel good after a time trial. Well, if that's not good, then, <laughs> then I don't know. But that was an excellent ride there by Thomas again. It didn't pull off today, <clears throat> but potentially in another day. But uh, the, the thing is, now I, I don't think Samiti and Visconti will stay away from the, the group now. Fellini pulling another almost 10 seconds back on um, Rowan Dennis. Rowan Dennis is just, he's just riding a time trial, we keep on saying that. He's still in with a chance, still with 12 kilometers to go, still, you know, good enough advantage, but it really all depends now on Sunweb. Andrea Indrame taken back. And here's the two riders that O'Brien are talking about. They're losing time to Dennis all the time though. And the peloton are starting to gain on them. Sami Thier from Aragon in the north of Spain. Visconti, the man born in Turin in the northwest of Italy, raised in Sicily. And here is Rowan Dennis, who was wearing the pink jersey when we got to Sicily a couple of years ago. After winning his only Giro d'Italia stage today. His gap to the peloton not changing too much. But remember, it, it is a bit of a marathon, this one. 14.4 Ks. It's all about surviving the first half of this climb, Brian, really. Yeah, that's what he has to do, isn't it? He'll know about it. He's got... You know some some good information coming from the car so if he gets into the the last half of this this climb still with a, about a minute's advantage if he doesn't leak too much now then there's still a, a good possibility of um, getting that stage when he, he's, he's already shown he's got the power in his legs he's riding a time trial he's not losing too much time it's you know seconds here and there and but if these riders that are 
want to step up and, and try and win the stage today and, and try and take this likes of Kelderman, try and test out Almeida and uh, Deconi Quickstep. Posse Vivo, he's a little bit further behind just um, behind the white jersey of McNulty. Let's don't forget McNulty on riding on the crest of a wave in the, in the white jersey there. But when you send your, your teammates to the front, you, you have to really give them something to, to shout about at the end. And we've already seen it from uh, Phil Sang's team, Kelderman's team and Posse Vivo. So let's wait to see when they decide to, to go on the attack here. Well, the adventure is almost over now for Visconti and Samitier. Visconti has put himself forward as a really big candidate to win the Maglia Azzurra as Fabio Fellini is now done. Jakub Fulsang is all on his own. And we wait to see what will happen and when. Now Fulsang in the Astana jersey, the turquoise, sits on the wheel of Nibali. Fulsang needs to take time back, remember. Four minutes, eight seconds down in 12th place. Just in front of him in 11th is Teo Gegenhardt. He's at 3.44. And it's some web who take it up at the front now. And yet again, on this climb, they have numbers. Taking time back on this group, who are they are going to take back now? Not doing too much to the difference to Rowan Dennis, who's still in with an opportunity. It would be something rather special, even from here, if he could carry it home, given the attacks we expect to come from behind. But if they wait, if they continue, if nothing happens, it will all play into the South Australians' hands. Well, the gap, since we, I just said before, he was holding, he was only licking a few seconds. Now it's coming down to closer to a minute. He needs to kind of hold on to this for the next, I would say, three or four kilometres until we go over the kind of steeper part. And then he'll get a little bit of respite. We're looking at him now and... He's starting to look a little bit tired. We know he's he's capable of doing this, but he's putting a lot of effort in here, and and they'll be able to see him on the climb just just up the road. So I'm afraid that this is going to be a a superhuman effort for um, Ron Dennis if he wants to try and pull this off for the stage win today. The gradient right now is around 10 percent. Goes down to nine and eight for the next kilometre or two. When we get to 9Ks to go roughly, there is a section at 14%. We look back at the peloton, Ben Swift's still there again. He's climbing like a demon at this Giro d'Italia. Peyo Bilbao just behind, still on the podium at the moment. Two minutes and 11 down from the Maglia Rosa Joao Almeida. Almeida still has three riders with him. James Knox on the left-hand side. Fausto Masnada is there as well. And there's Ben O'Connor on the right, still there for Pozzo Vivo. And McNulty sits on the wheel of Teo Gagan Hart there on the right hand side. A pairing of Micah and Comrade. Dark horses. We wait to see if they can produce something. This is a strong pace here, and I think now with uh, Sunweb taking control. You have to feel for Dennis. I don't think it's going to be his day today because you're just looking at the faces of, of the, the riders there and they're all kind of puffing and blowing. This is not easy for anybody, so this is a strong pace here from uh, Team Sunweb. The shark sits and waits. We can just about see the fin. Some climbing talent in that Sunweb team. Hamilton, Hindley, Bowman, Tusfeld. This man's gap starts to come down. Dennis begins to struggle. He's approaching the bigger gradients. It's been a cloudy day, hasn't it? The sun is out. A beautiful late afternoon autumnal sunshine. Next man up to do the job is Sam Oman. Some firepower here for Wilco Kelderman. Team somewhere that have history on this climb. As we look at Peyo Bilbao. Sitting towards the back of the bunch now. We've got the baby shark at the back as well, Antonio Nibali. I think uh, Bilbao may be disappointed in his time trial still sitting up there in a podium position but I still think 
50 is looking a little bit fatigued now. But also, talking about fatigue, I think it's starting to set in with uh, Rowan Dennis. He wasn't so fluid. Do you remember the, the time trial yesterday when in the moor it started a small gear and he was pedalling with some cadence? He seemed to be just kind of trying to roll the gear and I don't think it's going to be his day-to-day, -day, 39 seconds. Still no real attacks from the, from the peloton and another rider from uh, Sunweb has, has done his job. So, yeah, this is going to be a, a shake-up today by the looks of things because Kelderman using up his team. I know you would think that you do that for one reason and I think Kelderman will be trying to go on the attack, it's who's going to go with them. Posse Vivo, Phil Sang, Nibali, they're kind of all chewing up and I think Nibali will, will possibly try and wait, but you never know with him. Time's coming down quickly now, 10 kilometres to go for Dennis and he's not yet at that point where we get to 14% gradient. Gets harder for the next kilometre. It's been a brilliant ride, a sterling ride. But less than half a minute now and those cars in that gap are going to be taken out. They can see him on the road. Don't look back, Dennis. Oh, to the next rider we go. And this is moving on quickly and we see the Malia Rosa here. And Phil. there's Jakob Fulsang drifting alongside the Malia Rosa as well. Oh, the pace is up from Team Sunweb, and they're having to work hard to close the wheels. Pozzo Vivo, Bilbao, Micah, Conrad, and McNulty towards the back. And as soon as Omen was finished, that was that little acceleration by the next rider, and it's forcing riders to react, and it's not looking good for some. That slight acceleration there, Phil Sang just moved over to the left, and but the pink jersey came straight round and uh, onto the wheel in front. We're inside the last 10 kilometres on stage 15 of the Giro d'Italia, and we've just seen a little bit of an acceleration in the chase from somewhere. Rowan Dennis is about to be caught. Sam Oman moved over, and it was the next rider who put in the dig that really destroyed quite a few of the riders behind. Fulsang struggled to close the gap. The pink jersey reacted well, but he's only got one rider left with him now. Bill Bau and Pensteiner are there. Micah and Conrad are starting to struggle. Pozzo Vivo's not having a great day as well. And I think Brian Smith, we're going to see differences. We're going to see differences. There's Tailgag and Hart losing the wheel as well now. And we're approaching the steepest point of this climb to Piancavallo. Yeah, it's, you can see Phil Sang and Bill Bao now really, really struggling. And I think everybody's pretty much at the limit. And, and I even do think that uh, Almeida is starting to kind of crouch down a little bit more on uh, on the bike. Everybody's under the cosh at the moment. And if Kelderman's got some good legs at the moment and he wants to put a dig in, the uh, pink jersey is under pressure now. You see Tail Gig and Hart just coming round him. The pink jersey is under pressure. And uh, if Kelderman sees this and Sunweb pushes on and he goes on the attack, then he could be taking the pink jersey at the end. Well, Kagan Hart, take a look at this. We saw an Ineos jersey going backwards there. That was obviously Dennis. Assumed it might have been Gagan Hart, but Gagan Hart is riding a wonderful race here. As Conrad and Mike are starting to make their way back, Nibali is hanging on well. But remember, it's not looking good for Bill Bow. Started third on the podium. Yesterday's star, McNulty, I think, is paying for his effort as well, 24 hours ago. And we know that Fulsang, after all that work for Astana, they tried, they worked, they did their best. He just doesn't have it, Brian. Not simple as that. But his team have tried, and you can also see that I think that's Fabro tried to help Mar uh, Micah across there, and he's just about to beat it. But... Um, I tell you, Almeida is starting to struggle now, and he's starting to struggle big time. Maybe not the same as the others, but he's under a lot of pressure now as the uh, pink jersey. Ooh, look at that. He has Masnada behind him as well as Mike is starting to come back. This is the steepest gradient, by the way. 14% up here. Bill Bow and Fulsang are trying to work their way in. Remember, the last four and a half kilometers are the easiest. So if you make the difference, you need to press home the advantage as well. Conrad and Fabro there. Fabro, there was the one swinging left to right. Great job, though, that was done for Micah. As you can steal, still two riders there for Wilco Kelderman. 
And what a super job they're doing. Kelderman third wheel there, jersey unzipped. A big winner so far. Hurtling towards the top ten here, Brian, is Teo Gagan Hart sitting fourth wheel in that navy jersey for the Ineos Grenadiers. Nibali, doing a Nibali, just there or thereabouts. Yeah, they might not be winning the stage with uh, Rowan Dennis, but they could be doing it with uh, Teo Gagan Hart. But let's see what Kelderman has got on his legs. They, they must be seeing these pictures, they must be seeing the, the decimation behind. And, you know, they're all puffing and blowing, they're all, you know, trying as hard as they can. but. They're just making Kellerman a difference was smiling now. And now they're Nibali. Nibali losing contact and the pink jersey is forced to close the wheel here. Oh, big moment in this Giro d'Italia because Vincenzo Nibali is in crisis for the first time. And a man who's there, always there. Today, Brian is losing meters and could be losing time. Yeah, you can see just the, the way he, he pulled over there to the left-hand side, went straight to his bottle. We don't normally see him cracking like this, but he is going to lose quite a bit of time now by the, the way he uh, just lost the wheel there. Good reaction initially from Almeida because that in itself was a test for the pink jersey. He had to make that little effort to close the wheel. He did so, he's still there. And now it's up to Nibali, once they're over the steepest gradient, to see if he can work. Sonweb still have the power. I'm pretty sure I just saw Kelderman smile when we saw that last shot of him. He's looking very good indeed. Masnada putting in a great ride in the blue and white as well with Almeida. And Rathon Maika stands to be one of the big gainers of the day. And Nibali hasn't cracked completely. Just wonder if it was a steepest gradient that might have just done for him a bit there. It gets a little easier. Now full sun, and he has Fabra on his wheel, the local rider from Udine. This is Bilbao. Bilbao will be very, very thankful for Domen Novak, the domestique he has working for him here. Great ride from him. Well, it looks as if he's coming back to, uh, to Nibali now. In fact, this is, this is Novak, pardon me. Nibali on the front there, and well, Bilbao staging some sort of a recovery. Stellar ride from Novak, this, the man with his jersey open just in front. Yeah, strong ride, but you can only think of, if you start, suffered in the, in the steep part of this climb, when the gradient lessens and you've got power in your legs, you can still do a lot of damage. Well, Jai Hindley might have struggled in the white jersey. But he and Team Summer were doing a great job here. We saw Tusfeld and Ormen do their jobs. Hamilton and Hindley, and you can see waiting, ready, poised, it's Wilco Kelderman. Remember, he is 56 seconds behind Joao Almeida. And they're opening up 19 seconds to the Nibali group. As I said, you've got to really take advantage of the differences you make in the first half of this climb. gets easier. First shots we've had for a while of Domenico Pozzo Vivo. Again, you've got a feel for him. Another man unlucky with mechanicals. He's had to use a bit more energy than he would have liked today, I think, Brian. With his teammates caught in a crash, he was caught up as well, having a chase on. As we go back to McNulty, wait to get a time check to McNulty and Fulsang, because McNulty was exciting a lot of people yesterday with what he did in the time trial. We said right at the start of the day, this is James Knox in their group, but if you went into the red yesterday, Mountain Stage State after a time trial could always see big swings one day and huge swings back the next. Yeah, he vaulted up the, the general classification. You know, brilliant time trial, but like as you say, Rob, it's, it's a learning process for a lot of these riders. And the fact that he, he did go really deep yesterday and, and did a brilliant performance, probably the the ride of the day away from uh, Philip Ogana, or pro possibly the, the surprise of the day, but then the next day, you know, slipping down the general classification. Rafael Maika having a good day. He's currently sixth in the GC at 2.33 as well, and the last week will suit Rafael Maika. 
Nibali at 20 seconds. Full sang only 10 seconds behind. Now then, we've seen a move here. I'm trying to press on it, Tinley. Gegenhart on his wheel, and look at the Maya Rosa. Look at the Maya Rosa. The gap is opening up for the first time in this Giro d'Italia. Brilliantly set up by Hamilton. Masnara starting to struggle, and Joao Almeida is all on his own. Brian, this is Wilco Kelderman. This is Joao Almeida, and the Maya Rosa is up for grabs. Definitely is, but uh, Almeida's going to put up a fight. At the same time, Masnada was starting to struggle a little bit, but the rider from Sunweb was straight onto the radio, giving that information back to uh, Kelderman. But Almeida will continue to fight on. He's he's not he's not in the red at the moment. He's uh, still got a little bit left, but you can only think the longer he continues like this, and if the pressure is kept on by by Jai Hindley here. Great ride from uh, Teo Gagan Hart and Kelderman, but he's looking around. What does he do now? Does he does he wait for Masnada? Does he continue on? You know, how is he feeling? Does he go right into the red to stay with? Because if he does go into the red for too long, he's going to sh uh, he's going to lose a lot, a lot of time. Jaya Hindley, who yesterday lost uh, a chance to wear the white jersey, and out of tenth in the GC is absolutely burying himself here for the man who's second. Teo Gagan Hart started the day in 11th. He's on his way to the top 10. Oh dear. Joao Almeida, 12 days in the Maya Rosa. He's absolutely swinging here. But he's desperate not to lose contact. It's a hard thing to do when, you know, they're just in front of you. How much do you, do you stay on that? the cusp of, of completely blowing up because if he completely blows in this climb, he, he, he'll lose a lot of time. So he's still a young rider, he's still learning about himself. It must be uh, it must be torture for him. The gap's opening up as well now. The gap is opening up. Remember, they're trying to take advantage of these steeper slopes before we get to what's a little bit easier at the end. Gagan Hart will work with whoever's there, despite the fact that he's good mate. He's losing quite a bit of time here. Former teammates, those two. Six and a half kilometres remain to the top in Cancavallo. And you can you can see that um, every bit, you know, around the corner there, put it into a smaller gear. You know, he's, up, he's right on the verge, on the knife edge here of, of completely cracking. Looking down at his power, though, as well. And the gap is just getting longer. The elastic has not quite snapped yet, but it's being pulled rather strongly by Jai Hindley. He's already been in this position on uh, Edna when he lost the, the GC group and he battled to take the, the pink jersey and he's going to battle for the next um, six kilometres or so, but you know what's Kelderman got left in the tank as well, he's not made any acceleration. Did he get a time gap to these guys? And the white jersey, come to think of it. But Nolte, just in front of Fulsung, and there's James Knox, as we're back now to Pozzo Vivo. Still has O'Connor in front of him. That's Pernsteiner as well, the other Bahrain rider. Oh, and look at it, he's absolutely trying to bury himself there, head down, fighting everything, fighting the bike, fighting gravity, I'm afraid. Seven seconds becomes 10. Six Ks to go still. Hang in there. He's really got to hang in there to stay in the race. And we had a decent enough lead, 56 seconds. But regardless of the time gap here, Kelderman will now smell blood going into this next week. It's 50 seconds to Nibali. And that is a big gap with 6K still to go. That's what Almeida has to, has to think about now. And I know that he's got an experienced rider, uh, our next rider in, in the car behind. You don't want to risk it, everything here. If he's on the on the knife edge, and he has been, he's riding as hard as uh, Jai Hindley at the front. He, he's losing just one second here, two seconds. But how long can he keep this up? Because if he does crack too much, you know, he could he could lose you know a minute or possibly two minutes. But you know, it's he, he has to measure that. You notice that he's looking at his uh, power meter. He's looking at his numbers. If he's riding within himself, he's. 
he's doing well at um, you know kind of holding this gap down but one thing you don't want to, to risk losing everything you don't want to risk losing the you know not being on the podium at all so he has to ride a time trial and we know he's very good at it but you can only think that you can see him shifting up and down the gears as well before this is going to be a, a brutal five and a half kilometers for this young man from portugal super ride this from jay henley Australians going great guns ahead of Tailgeg and Hart from East London. This is Wilco Kelderman from the Netherlands. And he attacked on Mount Etna, the cameras didn't show him. He's been floating along there in third, then up to second. But the invisible man is about to show himself at the Giro. And he's getting closer and closer to the race lead. Almeida hanging on pretty well at the moment, but as Brian was saying, 5k still to go. Fight he's putting up is impressive. But what is it taking out of him with a few Ks still to go? And that surely, that final attack from Kelderman, surely still to come. It's swinging back and forth, isn't it? McNulty was better than Fulsang. Now Fulsang is going better than McNulty. And McNulty, by the way, looks like he's about to lose his place in the young rider standings too to Jai Henley. But Henley's giving everything to put each and every second into the Maya Rosa. He can, and it goes to 14 now. This is where it could get worse. What's left in the tank, Joao? It's been 12 days in the Maya Rosa. Portugal is dreaming of pink. He's hanging on, but only just. This is the Nibali group at a minute now, so another 10 seconds goes to them. Bill Bow is with him, and he's slipping off the podium as it stands. Almeida is still doing a, an incredible job here. He's taking his earpiece out, and he's just going to do this himself. He's he's hurting. We can see that he's hurting, and but it's still only one, two seconds now. 17 seconds. Just to remind you that Kelderman started today 56 seconds behind the pink jersey. And that there are 10, 6 and 4 bonus seconds for first, second and third respectively at the top of the mountain. 20 seconds now to Almeida, the biggest gap. And it increases to Danibali, it increases to Fulsang. And we don't yet have a gap to Pozzo Vivo, they're further back. There's going to be another big resetting of the GC and tactical landscape tonight. Mountain after mountain after mountain in the final week. He's come back from further down before us, Nibali. As Brad said yesterday, never count him out, but it is not a good day for the Shark. What kind of day is it going to be the end for Almeida? Over 20 seconds. So with the bonuses in, let's say that roughly Kelderman is halfway to the Maglia Rosa but he's still got 4Ks to ride. As Brian said, 56 second deficit at the start. 10, 6 and 4 bonuses on the line. 23 seconds now on the road. And there's still more to come from this group. It's all Henley, still all Henley. Gagan Hart still with a good chance of a stage win too. A really good chance, allied to the fact that he is well, he's on his way towards the top five now, not just the top ten. The way in the rate of loss here, Teo Gergen Hart is putting himself forward as a candidate to win the Giro d'Italia. This is how good the riders from the Ineos Grenadiers, man. Gergen Hart started the day at 3 minutes 44 in 11th place. The way this is going and the way the gaps are opening up, could be seeing a swing from outside the top 10 towards the podium, like we saw for McNulty yesterday, who went from 11th to 4th. And if he continues like this, um, you know, he'll probably be just under three minutes behind the uh, behind Kelderman, which puts him in a, a really good position. But the form he's shown at the moment coming into the, the final week, rest day tomorrow, final week, you know, you never know him. I think he's got two the team, three, hasn't he, as well? Two or three minutes is uh, very capable, but you have to think that Ineos are, are still kind of chasing these stages, hoping that uh, Teo will 
will come good. He has come good, so they might have to switch tactic and um, they might have to then go and start looking after Teo Gagan Hart and potentially trying to win the Giro. Well, they've got four stage wins already. If they get a fifth here, surely that's enough. They've got to think about the pink jersey then. Now, here's Full Sun. Looks as though he's having a bit of a second win here and he's getting back to the Nibali group. But he's still losing time again and at this rate he's going to be around five, six minutes down at the end. Noxo thinking about his own chance. He wants to get back on here. He's having a good cheer himself. Let's not forget about that. 14th before the start of the day. Of course, he's gaining time on the likes of Pozzo Vivo and company too. And remember, if his teammate Almeida continues to lose time, it could be there for him at the end. Now, just less than three Ks to go and Almeida's lead. 56 seconds at the start of the day. Trails by 28 on the road here. Make it 30 plus bonus seconds. We're getting scarily close now to a change in the Maya Rosa. It's hanging by a thread for the Portuguese. Kudos again though for the battle he's putting up. Tremendous battle he's, he's doing. I don't know how he's doing it, but when I saw him cracking and, and the way he did crack a little bit there, he got himself together and, you know, he's holding them. He was holding them at 10 seconds, but you just had to think that while he was trying to hold them at 10 seconds, he was going to pay for it later on. And if he does crack big style, then he, he's going to lose a lot of time. But he's now holding at 29 seconds and still no reaction from uh, Kelderman. But look at Kelderman now. He's on the point of the saddle. Tail Gagan Hart looks the most comfiest of the three riders that are in front here. So it's looking good for a, a fifth stage win for, uh, for Ineos. But, um, you know, the Sunweb riders are, are finding it as difficult as uh, Joe and Meadow as well. Well, they're winning the day in terms of the GC. Whatever happens, they're taking time back on this man. But he might not be completely out of it here. Joao Almeida is putting up the fight of his life. It's the Giro's motto, isn't it, nowadays? Fight for pink. And that is exactly what the 22-year-old from Portugal is doing. 12 days in the Malha Rosa. More than Eddie Merckx as a 22-year-old. It's been quite the performance for the man who's only moved to this level of cycling for the first time this year. A Grand Tour debut and looking to take the pink to the next rest day. He's not giving it up easy with 2.2 kilometers to go. 105 to Micah, 125 to Nibali. And this is the Pozzo Vivo group. It looks like Pedrero who's with him and Pernsteiner. Pedrero at 13th place at the start of the day. And Steiner, who started the day in 15th at 8 minutes. Last couple of kilometers on the way to Piancavallo. These are the easiest gradients of the whole climb. Jai Hindley, Wilco Kelderman, Teo Gagan Hart have 32 seconds on the Maglia Rosa. Kelderman was 56 seconds back at the start of the day. It's the first Portuguese to lead the Giro for 31 years. He's fighting so hard to hold on to it. His teammates are riding brilliant as well. Masnada is another of those teammates, Knox. But with Nibali, who initially was looking solid, but suddenly, suddenly, just as we hit the 14% gradient, we saw that little bit of an acceleration from uh, Christopher Hamilton. And that did for him. But to, uh, to... He's with Peyo Bilbao here. Sorry, Brian. Tail Gagan Hart could actually help the pink jersey here and by winning the stage, taking the 10 seconds, helping himself, of course, he's in the perfect place, he's looking good. By taking the stage, taking the six seconds, even if Kelderman takes the uh, takes the 10 seconds, even if Kelderman takes the six, that's 50 seconds. Almeida's still in pink by 18 seconds and you, can, you have to consider one and a half kilometres to go. Almeida could be stale and pink at the end of the day, into the rest day, and that's what he's battling for. One of these three looks likely to take their first ever Grand Tour stage win. They reach the snow line. It's an October autumnal Giro d'Italia, but it's the spring, the youth of the peloton, that is driving things on. Only Wilco Kelderman out of all of this group is approaching his summer. 
29 years of age and looking for his first win in five years. And Rafael Maika seems to be putting up a big fight as well. He's at 115, and he's going to stay in touch with the GC battle come the second rest day. It's not going to be his best day today, but he's there or thereabouts and fighting for the podium. Almeida at 32 seconds now. Briefly it went to 34. It is hanging in single digits by the time you look at the time bonuses. One kilometer remains, and it's still Jaya Hindley. Tailgate and Hart waits for the Ineos Grenadiers looking for their fifth stage win. Wilco Kelderman wanting to take time back and maybe go to the Mayadoza. Kelderman, too, has never won a stage of a Grand Tour. Almeida hasn't either, but it's his debut Grand Tour and he's been in the race lead for 12 days. One effort, one kilometre, and can he hold on? He's going to give every ounce of energy he has left. I think Remember he's going to save it. Six and four bonus seconds. I think he's going to save it. I think Teo looks very good for the stage win here, but I think the pink jersey Almeida is going to save this. This is going to be a quite incredible performance, and what a story going into the final week if he can pull it off. It's Hindley with his jersey up in the white for team somewhere. Teo Gegenhart just behind the man from London. Never won a stage of a Grand Tour before. Often talked about and could be the latest of the list of alumni from Axion Hagens Berman to do the business at this Giro. His old teammates trying to stay in pink behind. But here, Wilco Kelderman is looking to finish off the work done by team somewhere. And here we go. It's Hindley there. Shake of the head by Gagan Hart. And here comes Kelderman on the right-hand side. Matter of a few hundred metres to go. Remember, 10, 6 and 4 bonus seconds available. There is Gagan Hart on the wheel. It's Kelderman who takes over. It looks as though it's Kelderman who's going to the line. But now Gagan Hart launches his attack. Ineos Grenadiers to the front. Gagan Hart is there to do it. It's going to be a coming of age for the man from East London. Yet another young gun to hit the heights of the Giro d'Italia. It's a five-star Giro for the Ineos Grenadiers. It is stage win number five for them it's a first in the history in big races for tailgate and Hart. he's now also in the fight for the pink jersey and the Mayados himself is desperate to hang on remember six bonus seconds there went for kelderman and we are counting back 56 seconds at the start of the day so that clock has to get beyond 50 if he is to lose the jersey here Let's have a look, and I think he's going to hold it. What a performance! Stand up and salute Joao Almeida. The Portuguese cry to the arms, to the weapons in their national anthem. And well, he's been manning the guns all the way up. Joao Almeida takes pink into the third week. Rafa Maika is just about going to stay in touch, but it's the oldies down the back. Fulsang, Nibali, and company who are going to lose a sack full of time. We waited for the action today. It all came on the final climb. Victory to Gagan Hart. Almeida keeping the jersey. Wilco Kelderman gets closer. And Rafael Maika fighting as he always does. Pantani, Lander, Gagan Hart. How does that sound, Brian Smith? The three winners down the years in Pian Cavallo. And here we go. Here we go. Across the line, Bilbao, Nibali, full sunk. And that is 1 minute 38 to them. Incredible. It could have been a heck of a lot of time lost by the Mallarosa. In the end, he has defended and he's hung on by a handful of seconds. Pozzo Vivo loses just south of two minutes. That's a disappointing day for him. But we've had big movements and a big name winner. It's a British win at the Giro d'Italia. Teo Gagan Hart takes the stage. He's on his way up towards the top five. And Brandon McNulty, after such a swing in his favour yesterday. Oh, dear. The white jersey will no longer be on his shoulders when we continue. That should pass back to Jai Hindley. McNulty has it all to do again. Everybody exploring their limits. Once more, Gagan Hart winning. Almeida in the pink. As the young guns having their fun.
2.43. This was the moment. Kelderman came to the front but didn't have it. Gagan Hart on the wheel. Hindley had done all the work up the climb. And tail Gagan Hart. Another former rider from the Axion Hagen's Berman camp. Goes off to take it. Knows he has time for a celebration. And what a Giro d'Italia it's proving to be for the Ineos Grenadiers. Losing Geraint Thomas so early. Gagan Hart wins their fifth stage. And now might even have an outside chance of going for the Giro d'Italia. Whisper it quietly, but Theo Gagan Hart is right in the game. Amazing. Incredible stage. Well done, Tail. Gagan Hart. He did look at the, the comfiest of the riders. I think, as you see, the timing up in the left hand side there. Possibly two seconds back to Wilco Kelderman. So it does look as if the, uh, the pink jersey still belongs to Almeida by about 13 or 14 seconds. But um, yeah, Tail back in the game and stage 15 they've won a third of the stages <laughs> and I think as well that was uh, another dedication for those who've worked so hard to put him in the right place look at the fighting spirit from his former teammate in the under 23s Chihuahua made is the real deal be interesting to see now how any um, Grenadiers play this one, but hats off to this man. He held on to it. 13, 14 seconds. Incredible performance. Tailgang and Hart wins stage 15 of the Giro d'Italia and joins the Grand Tour Stage Winners Club. Looked brilliant all the way. He's beaten Kelderman, Hindley, and Almeida. The latter holds on to the Maglia Rosa. One week to go, the Giro d'Italia is in play. Qualcuno che sale e qualcuno che scende. Chi sale è sicuramente Vilco 